Merry Christmas. It is good to welcome all of you here in the sanctuary, and certainly I want to welcome all those who are gathered online. I'm Pastor Dave, and on behalf of the church, I'm uh, just uh, thrilled to have you here. Last year when we uh, gathered for worship, there was literally no one out here. So it's, uh, we've made improvement this year, but we, hopefully next year we'll have an even bigger crowd. But you have uh, blessed us uh, by being here. Today is a communion service. Tonight's a communion service, so hopefully on the way in that you received a, a communion cup. If you're at home, we invite you to be a part of that. Uh, set aside some bread and wine, and uh, we'll walk you through that in a, in a short while. Would you please stand? Friends, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, O God of all creation, and blessed is the communion into which you gather us. You come to us in everything you have created, in seas and stars, in river and rock, but now we celebrate the gift of yourself given to us in a fragile baby, share of our flesh and blood. O oh, come, let us adore him. Send your Holy Spirit among us that we might follow the star of your hope, reflect the bright beams of your grace and truth, and offer our gifts wherever we find your Son. O oh, come, let us adore him. Shine your light on us like the blazing sun, withering all that is trivial and false forcing our roots deeper into your mercy and driving us to seek rest and replenishment in the cool oceans of Christ's love. O come, let us adore him.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal God, from the tabernacle of heaven to the poverty of a stable, your radiant light shines forth in a tiny baby wrapped in rags. Such humble love astounds us. And Jesus, you have become one of us, that we might become one with you. Open our hearts to joyfully receive his love, that he may be born in us and we in him, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment to greet each other uh, with a message of peace. Certainly feel free to look at a camera and greet all those who are gathered at home as well. God's peace, Peter. Friends, again, I, I want to welcome all of you. Uh, I know everyone here in the sanctuary has already checked in, but certainly want to encourage those who are worshiping online, if you would just let us know that you're, uh, we're, you're with us tonight. We appreciate that. Uh, they have the instructions on the screen. If you have our church app, you just go to the worship tab and, and sign in that way. Uh, reminder, tomorrow we have a, uh, a live stream service at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the, nothing will be in the sanctuary. It was all recorded early. So uh, join us for that. Maybe get up, open your presence, and then worship with us. Sunday morning we'll have a unique schedule. We're combining our services, so that will be uh, 10 o'clock as well. Uh, then Sunday, the January 2nd, will be the Festival of, of Epiphany. Uh, so we'll have both services that day, but we'll remember the visit of the, of the Magi coming uh, from, the, from the east. Uh, we, uh, Sunday school will be on hiatus till January 9th, but uh, we invite you to come join us. Uh, if, if, as you came in the sanctuary today, you might have noted the, uh, the beautiful tree we have there with little angels on that. Uh, people in the church have been picking those little angels up. It uh, lists some things that, uh, that are helping us make baby kits for uh, Lutheran World Relief to help refugee children. So it's a very important project. Some of the kids in the early service brought, uh, brought forward uh, some gifts for baby Jesus and left them here at the altar. Uh, you'll see Mary and Joseph and uh, the baby Jesus display in the sanctuary, and that's where you're going to leave them. Uh, feel free to do that Sunday, also on January 2nd. Uh, many people ask about how you can support uh, tornado relief. Uh, this is the simplest way I can tell you. Lutheran Disaster Response does a fantastic job. 100% uh, of what you give will be given right to the, uh, donation, the, to the, to the uh, tornado relief efforts, so LDR.org. Uh, if you're new to us or uh, haven't yet found us, found uh, our e-newsletter, that you just go to that link, sign up for that, and that just helps you stay in touch with the things that are going on. And lastly, uh, just a reminder, we have a Wednesday night service here at Good Shepherd. We will start a, uh, a new series called Fixer Upper, Restoring, Rebuilding, and Renewing Lives. That starts on, uh, on January, or, yeah, January 5th. We'll be in a, in a new year. So uh, with that, uh, Casey's going to read for us. Oh, sing to the Lord, oh, excuse me, a reading of Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established, it shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. The field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Merry Christmas to our friends at home and our friends here at the church. We are also excited to celebrate Jesus' birthday with you. I am Frances Fultz. I am the Minister of Christian Education here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. We had a tough decision of what to do for our children's service, our first service of the evening, because we usually have a um, Christmas pageant with 50 kids, and um, we couldn't do that this year obviously. So we thought and thought about what to do, and we ended up deciding to have that group of kids right there, a bunch of high schoolers, do a live nativity. And they were great. They read the story, and um, the Valerie in the middle, she was in fourth grade in the pageant. She was Mary, so she reprised her role, which was sort of fun. And as Pastor Dave said, the kids at the end brought up gifts to the Holy Family and the wise men and such, and it was a lot of fun. And it had me start thinking about, you know, when did live nativity start? And uh, I guess I'll ask you guys, how many of you guys, anyone know how live nativity nativity started? No? Okay. I thought maybe someone in this church would, this um, service would know. No one has known yet. Oh, someone said it back here. Oh, with Jesus. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> the first live nativity was actually started by this man, Francis of Assisi, almost 800 years ago in the year 1223. Right outside 
right outside of the Italian town of Greco. But the story of the first live nativity, the acting out of the Christmas story, started here. And I recognize some people who have been here before and might recognize this place. Um, this is the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. And people who want to come see where Jesus was born, they come here. And that's what St. Francis did. He came to the Church of the Nativity. And to come into the church, this is really the door. You might think I'm crazy, but that is the door to get into the church. Everyone has to bow to go into the church. So St. Francis would have bowed and entered the church. And then he would have entered this long, long area. And at the far, you have to walk through this long area. And at the far end, if you look carefully, there's a gold altar. And when you get to the altar, you go to the right, and there's about five steps down to this door. And when you go into that door, you enter the cave where they think Jesus was born. And now, as you can see, there's lamps hanging down and curtains and such, but you're definitely in a cave. And when you go there, you can sing, you can say a prayer, you can worship there. Um, and St. Francis loved this. He was just overwhelmed with the experience of worshiping at the place where they thought Jesus was born. So just an aside, you might think, a cave? Wait a second, Francis. I thought you, Jesus was born in a stable. In Bible times, they typically used caves, like you see in this picture, as stables, because there were a lot of caves, and they were an easy place to have your animals. Now, St. Francis wanted to share this amazing experience with the people back home. So the very next Christmas, he did an unusual thing. He told them, we're going to have Christmas Eve services at the cave outside of town. And before the Christmas Eve services, he did just what you see in the picture. He put a manger in the cave and a donkey and an ox. So the first nativity was just that, a manger, a donkey, and an ox. And the people came from all over the area, just like the early shepherds did, to come to a cave with animals and a manger. And they experienced the first Christmas in a whole new way. And they still do that in that town. They have tons of live nativities now, 800 years later. They're very proud of that. St. Francis wanted his people, the people in his parish, to truly understand that they were part of the Christmas story. That just like the shepherds, who after that night would go out and tell everyone about Jesus, and Mary and Joseph, who after that wonderful night would raise Jesus and love him and care for him, and Jesus himself, who would grow up to do great miracles and teaches about love, just like all those people, the work of the Christian just begins on Christmas. It's just the beginning. As the great and inspiring civil rights leader um, Howard Thurman, known as the grandfather of the civil rights movement in the United States, so perfectly explains this great poem, The Mood of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Like the shepherd so long ago, we come to worship baby Jesus and leave here tonight ready to help others, to care and share, and bring your love into the world. Amen.
the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You'll find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. To those gathered here in the sanctuary and those uh, many gathered at home, grace and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, This Christmas, I want to begin by describing a a, a famous video that circulated uh, around the internet a number of years ago. It's a famous experiment. But picture uh, six people, three of them have white shirts, three of them have black shirts, two basketballs. And you're told from the get-go. Count the number of times the white shirt players pass the basketball. Pretty self-explanatory. So the buzzer goes off and the six people start moving quickly, going in and out through each other. But you're pretty good at this. You're tracking it, one, two, three. Uh, They start moving quicker and quicker, weaving in and out. But you're counting seven, eight, nine. All of a sudden the buzzer goes off and you're asked how many times did the white team pass the ball? and you're sharp like I am, you'll say 15, 15, and you would be correct. Uh, Because we just have been lasered in on counting every pass. We got it, 15. And then someone asked, did you spot the gorilla? (laughs) Did you spot the gorilla? And uh, David's going to show us a picture of this, but a person in a gorilla costume literally walked through the middle of the game paused, pounded his chest as if he was roaring, and then walked to the other side. And way more than half the people who watched that video completely missed the gorilla. It's interesting. They were so busy looking at one thing, they missed this unexpected thing that had just gone right in front of them, right in their midst, this great surprise. And I I, I sometimes wonder how much of life is like that that uh, we get laser focused on something. You know, we're looking at some things and we just miss out on some really interesting, different, and the important things that are just literally right in front of us. You know, this Christmas you might ask yourself a few questions, like what, are you, what have you been tracking this year? Where has your attention been throughout this year? What have you been focused on? And what have you been missing? I'll tell you, the last one is kind of hard to answer, but the the first questions are pretty easy to answer. Uh, Maybe you've been counting the things you've missed out on. Some people are uh, tracking the ways they feel wronged and their anger is just coming out more and more. Some people, a lot of us, we've been tracking a lot of things related to COVID. 
All right, spikes, downturns, upticks, positivity rates, who's in quarantine, who was exposed, who can get an appointment, who can get the booster shot now, who can get an, a, a home kit to take your COVID test. Uh, you may be giving a lot of attention to how much has changed in work, at school, in life in general. You may be wondering, when are you going to get some time off? When's new help going to be hired? Some of you may be literally counting the days until you can retire. Uh, your attention may be, some people's attention is perpetually focused on everything digital. Their head is buried in social media, uh, surfing from one thing to the next, clicking on photos and quizzes. Uh, the lifestyles of the rich of the famous thing pops up. You got to click on that, of course. Or uh, many of people are just addicted to what I would say is the digital next. When the next email, the next like, the next comment, the next photo, the next text, you, you just name it. We, it's irresistible. Uh, we've given our attention to things that confirm our worldview. Many people just simply watch their own brand of news, and they've made the world into rivals. And it becomes very, very hard to have true conversation and civility and people who can build bridges. Some of you uh, may be given tons of attention to uh, questions about the future, and as you think about that, that just gives you a, a lot of anxiety. And there are some here who are taking note of the things that you just know you need to change in your life, but you're not sure if you have the ability or the courage to take the next step. All of us are tracking different things that, that personally impact each of us. But I want to ask, what's the gorilla in your life? What's the gorilla in your life? What's roaring that, that you might have missed? What is roaring that might be the blessing right in front of you that you have desperately needed to see? You know, on this night, we remember how some shepherds were going about their daily business, watching over their flocks. They were going through routine stuff like we go through routine stuff. Their focus would be on getting their flock to somewhere where they could graze for food and where they could find water to drink. But uh, shepherds were, were generally people on the move, like we're people on the move a lot of the times. They were people on the move, maybe not at warp speed, but moving about. And uh, they'd be watching out for predators, trying to protect their own so that they didn't get harmed. They'd be walking regularly in the midst of their flock, probably taking note of, hey, are they healthy? Are they uh, moving, walking around in a good way? They would note changes of behavior. And I'm sure they counted them on occasion. I would love to interview a shepherd, but I always wonder what, what was in their heart? How were they feeling? I, I sometimes wonder if they were a bit lonely, like a lot of the people in our world right now are, are very, very, very lonely. On this night, in the midst of their daily reality, though, as their sheep were moving about, I suggest to you that a gorilla roared, and they didn't miss it. They did not miss it. A messenger of hope appeared to them with a simple message. Do not be fearful. Don't live your life in fear. I have good news. A loving God says that you matter. A loving God cares for you. The messenger of hope says good news has arrived. It's not far from here. To you is born a savior who is absolutely going to turn the world upside down, who will lead a revolution, but it'll be a revolution of the human heart. He will show the world the things that make for peace. The messenger of hope says this child will treat all people with respect and dignity and show people the way to truly, truly live. And the messenger of hope calls him the Messiah, the Savior, the long-awaited Messiah. And so the messenger of hope said to these shepherds, let this child's ways roar. Let his ways of inclusion and welcome prevail. Let him mentor you in true justice and what it is to truly be fair in this life. And so, as we well know, we've known it most of our life, the shepherds went to see for themselves. And I say to you, I think that's how hope works. It shows up in your life, it begs you to take notice, and it invites you in, it welcomes you to embrace it. Hope believes that the world around us can be so much better. But it also invites us as individuals, each of us as individuals, to be a lot more than we are at this moment in time. And I don't know about you, I need to be a lot more in the days ahead than I am in this present moment. Hope wants to be contagious and spread and touch literally everyone. We're trying to contain a virus, 
but hope we want to spread everywhere. You know, the shepherds were just charged up. The hope they got that night was just contagious in their heart and soul. They returned glorifying and praising God wherever they went. What you got to see is they became messengers of hope themselves. But I, I think on this Christmas Eve, we need to be real, real clear that hope is not defined as optimism. Hope is not wishful thinking. Hope is, in fact, a gift from God that uh, enables us to really understand the reality around us. It's just rooted in day-to-day -day reality. It means that you and I, we can look at this world with all its flaws and blemishes and shortcomings, its cruel and violent ways, yet we can still have the courage to offer an unexpected response that it doesn't deserve, but we need to give it anyway. Love and compassion and an abiding, enduring commitment to show the world a much better way. You know, Jim Wallace once said, hope is believing in spite of the evidence and then watching the evidence change. And that means we don't sit still and just wish for this preferred future to arrive. Uh, when Frances teaches the Confirmation Kids, our middle school students, she uh, describes hope as, you know, the first three letters of hope are what? Hop. Hope is hopping into action day in and day out, becoming that messenger of hope yourself. And we would remind those kids, and we remind our adults, hey, it's right now. the world needs us. The world needs our help. You know, Richard Rohr said, the best criticism of the bad is the practice of the better. The best criticism of the bad is the practice of the better. I just love that. So I think that brings us back to the beginning. What have you been paying attention to? And what do you need to pay more attention to in the next year? Will it be the same old, same old, or are you ready for something better and much different? Uh, I, I'd like to challenge you. I'd like to challenge myself, too. But I'd like to challenge us to start looking more and more for the messengers of hope in your life. They may not always be obvious, but I would say the more and more you start to look for it, they're out there. They really are roaring quietly, consistently, and daring you to listen. You spot one, you start to look for the second one. You spot two, there's going to be four. There, once you find four, there's going to be eight. You're just going to start f seeing them more and more because you're looking. And when you start to notice them, you'll realize the same thing the shepherds did. It's time for you to jump in and be that messenger of hope yourself. Just to be that unexpected blessing that just keeps walking into the life of other people that surprises them with great joy. So I, what I would say is go roar out Jesus' message of love, inclusion, welcome. Roar out his care and compassion. And whatever you do, err on the side of showing grace and mercy to the world around you. I'd say, I suggest to you, if that's what we roar out, that's Christianity at its very, very best. If we roar that out, the world around us will experience a ton of healing in the days ahead. We'll experience inner healing as well. If that's what we roar out, that child of Bethlehem doesn't just become the king of Christmas Eve. That child of Bethlehem becomes the king of our life each and every day. Amen. Let's stand and sing together.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Jesus, 2,000 years ago, you showed up into a world in need. Show up again in our world, in our lives. Mentor us in your ways. Spark us and rally us to be your messengers of hope in this world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Touch our hearts and inspire us to pursue the things that make for peace. Stir us to new possibilities for interacting with others. Make us more compassionate, empathetic. Teach us to be good listeners. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, teach people to use their words wisely in every medium, in person, text, tweet, and in all forms of social media. Lord, in your mercy. Bring an end to bullying in this world. Spark a new era of civility and cooperation in the halls of Congress and throughout this nation. Bring an end to gun violence, racism, and every form of injustice. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, we thank you. We, we pray for those who have been deeply impacted by tornadoes and natural disasters this year. Grant endurance for relief workers and provide resources to rebuild and renew their communities. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, keep watch over our schools, enable them to be safe, vibrant places for learning. We give thanks for the witness of teachers, staff members, and all who work to bless children. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, grant endurance to all health care workers and provide them with ongoing encouragement. Help our, help our world to work together to prevent the spread of COVID. Teach us to take actions that care for others. Enable vaccine distribution to blanket this nation and our world. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, we pray this night for those who have lost a loved one this year. Draw near and provide comfort and reassurance. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the witness of this congregation as we gather in person and online. Fill us with joy and enthusiasm. Enable us to be a beacon of hope for others. Lord, in your mercy. Grant healing to those in our lives who we know need your care. We pause and remember those precious people aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, at this point, I invite you to join me in the witness of generosity as we offer gifts to strengthen our congregation here at Good Shepherd, to further the mission of God in the world, and to help many, many people in need. Uh, let me offer a prayer. Uh, they, there's instructions if you'd like to offer a gift online. Uh, we also have a safe box here in the back if you have a physical offering. Uh, let's pray. Uh, Jesus, all we have is a gift from you. We are, we are so grateful for the many ways in which you provide for us. Uh, use what we, uh, we give this night to, to strengthen your church, to, uh, to bless the mission of, the, of, of, of your ways in the world, and, and use us, as always, to, uh, to care for neighbors uh, who need your care. Uh, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Friends, let's prepare ourselves to share the meal together here in the sanctuary. We invite you to, uh, to pick up your uh, communion cup. If you're at home, we invite you to take out your bread and your wine. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word made flesh brings harmony to the earth. As we offer ourselves in these your gifts, prepare us to receive the grace and truth you offer at this table and renew in us the song of your salvation in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to the love of God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Let me offer the words, and as I do that, I invite you just to briefly take off your mask to, to take the communion. Body of Christ give, given for you, Amen. and the blood of Christ shed for you.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of all glory, we give you thanks that you have fed us with your word made flesh, filling us with grace and truth. As we have received you in this holy meal and believed in your name, help us to live as your children, sharing light and life with all, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the true light shine on you. May the sun sent by God be your guide and your strength. May you go in peace and live in hope. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.